Are you ready to push After Effects to the limit and produce the best looking projects? Well, here's a simple breakdown on everything you need to know to produce surreal and cinematic motion graphics. You could say we're on a mission to make the best looking circle of all time, but in reality, we're just here to make any design look three dimensional. So we'll start with our circle or any design that you want. The first thing we must do is shade and light your design. So right click the layer and go to layer styles and add gradient overlay. We can edit the gradient and what we want to do is make sure the first color stop is white and the last color stop is a light gray. And if you click here somewhere in the center of the color space, this will add another stop. We can then set this color to a normal gray. And you can also use a different set of colors, but the goal here is to have a bright color, a medium color, and almost a bright color. Okay, now we can adjust the angle and insinuate that the light of our object is wrapping around the top edge and the bottom edge like this. Perfect. Now, one thing we need to do is make the edges brighter. So in the final example, the light on our circle will make a realistic difference. So we'll add an inner shadow and straight away, we'll set the blend mode to normal, the color to white or your brightest color, then the opacity to 100%, the distance to around five-ish and the size to about 35. Finally, we can change the angle to position the bright point along the edge that's already dark. Now, one last layer style that we'll use is satin to make the edges even brighter. By default, satin absolutely ruins everything. However, set the blend mode to normal, the color to white, and the opacity to 100%. Then, set the size to around 70 and click invert. Congratulations, you have finally used the satin effect. So, once you're good to go, pre-compose this bad boy, and we're almost done with the design. Start fresh by going to Effect, Perspective, drop shadow. Of course, set the color to white and change the direction to the dominant bright side of your circle and we'll bring the distance down by a touch. Of course, the next effect is the best effect, which is stylize glow. However, the glow effect is going to mess this up initially. So increase the threshold close to 100% and the radius to about 450. This will add a subtle glow, but we have a problem. If we enable transparency, we're getting this unusable black glow. So we need to set this to A and B colors and set the color B to white. Excellent, problem solved. Now duplicate the glow and set the threshold to 100% and the radius to 1000. All right, this is looking really clean. So let's go ahead and make this gritty with the post rise effect. We'll use a level around 70. And if you want to slightly colorize this, Add the tritone color correction effect. We can then slightly adjust the midtone color to the blues, and this will make a nice difference. All right, we have a great looking circle. We're done here, and now we're ready to build out a full scene. But first, be sure to get our free motion duck templates for After Effects, which will allow you to produce amazing work in no time. You can easily browse through thousands of templates and update them to fit your project needs. You can get access to the full collection of transitions, motion presets, creative elements, and much more with the links below. Okay, to create a full scene, go ahead and pre-compose this layer. Now, take the composition and make it a 3D layer. Position your layer anywhere and duplicate it. Our goal here is to now go through the process of duplicating and adjusting the Z position of the circle. But whatever you do, don't use scale to change the size of the circle, just change the Z position. This way will give our scene depth and it'll allow us to use cameras. When you're happy with your layout, go ahead and create a camera. We'll skip to the fun part and enable depth of field. And of course, nothing happens. So we'll do this ourselves and increase the aperture until we start to blur the scene. Then you can even adjust the focus distance to decide what's going to be in focus. But what I like to do is keyframe this to pop the circles in and out of focus, giving us this cool rack focus effect. All right, everything is looking great, but just to be sure, create an adjustment layer and add the noise effect and we'll set it to 5% and feel free to add titles or logos because this will make our scene look really cool. However, there's no movement to these spheres. So we'll animate everything in like 30 seconds. To do this, go into the previous composition and go to composition settings. Increase the width and height to 3000 by 3000. Click OK. Now just animate the position of the circle to start from one side of the composition to the other side, kind of like this. Now, back in our main composition, the circles will float up or in any direction that you chose. And real quick, 
For the background, do not use a pure white background. Just make it light gray. And if you're feeling like a perfectionist, uh, use the gradient ramp effect to make the bottom of the background brighter than the top portion of the background. Now go out there and always be creative.